Hey everyone, welcome to today's edition of One Single Story. It is uh, Friday. We've been discussing the book of Jonah this week, but today we're in, our reading was a psalm, Psalm 86, and it says, Bend down, O Lord, and hear my prayer. Answer me, for I need your help. Protect me, for I am devoted to you. Save me, for I serve and trust you. You are my God. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am calling on you constantly. Give me happiness, O Lord, for I give myself to you. O Lord, you are so good, so ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. Listen closely to my prayer, O Lord. Hear my urgent cry. I will call to you whenever I'm in trouble, and you will answer me. No pagan God is like you, O Lord. None can do what you do. All the nations you made will come and bow before you, Lord. They will praise your holy name, for you are great and perform wonderful deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may live according to your truth. Grant me purity of heart so that I may honor you. With all my heart, I will praise you, O Lord, my God. I will give glory to your name forever, for your, for your love for me is very great. You have rescued me from the depths of, of death. O oh God, insolent people rise up against me. A violent gang is trying to kill me. You mean nothing to them, but you, O oh Lord, are a God of compassion and mercy, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. Look down and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant. Save me, the son of your servant. Send me a sign of your favor. Then those who hate me will be put to shame. For you, O oh Lord, help me and help and comfort me. Um, there are a couple of different things. He talks about how devoted and how obedient he is um, and, and, and how he has a pure heart. And the, the question I want to ask to kind of talk around today is, how do compassion and mercy go along with being obedient and having a pure heart? How are the two connected? Did, is, is there any correlation between the two? I would say, definitely say so. I mean, in, in order to have that pure heart, we have to be obedient to make the changes in our lives and the things that we do, the way that we think, the way that we treat people. Because I think it was just this past Sunday you said that the the one of the biggest ways that we show uh, God's God's love to people is how we treat other people. So I think a lot of the and some of that stuff doesn't come naturally. I mean, we talked in the uh, past couple of days over how you can hold resentment to somebody that's done something bad or um, how you might look at people or not invest into them. So I think obedience is definitely key, especially to have uh, a pure heart and to um, exude passion to many people, not just selective people. Yeah, I don't think that that necessarily comes naturally to us as humans. And I feel like you have to be in a very close relationship with God to understand how he gives that to you, um, which, which is being able to be humble also, I think. But then when you truly understand that, I think it's a lot more natural for you to want to give that gift to other people. So when you give that gift to other people, compassion and mercy to mm -hmm. others. Um, I want to, I want to take this in a slightly different direction. When you give compassion and mercy to people, Do you respond differently to the person who receives that and then does the best they can to do the right thing after that versus the person you give compassion and mercy and they just go right back to the same thing? Do you, how do you, so, and so for them, so like the, the way I see it is when you're given compassion and mercy, your response should be to be obedient and do the right thing mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. But often it's not. Often we just go right back and repeat the same behavior again. Um, I think my response 
to compassion and mercy should be to be obedient and then seek to have a pure heart. I don't know that they necessarily, you know, we, we're, um, we're currently reading a book together and, um, I think the condition of our heart matters. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 and I don't think, I think it's a, it's a process. I don't, is purity of heart a prayer or is it a process? Let me ask you that. Let, let me go down this. I don't know. For me, it's a process. <laughs> it's taking a whole lot more than a prayer. To <laughs> I also feel like when you, have that purity of heart it is not uh, at least for me i do not experience it as something that i wake up having every day it to me it does feel like a process mm -hmm. it does take a lot of prayer of course but i do feel like it's a process and i feel like in that process you understand how you want to be more like christ mm -hmm. which in turn gives you more of that purity of heart and and becoming more like him means that you see people in more of the way that he does which does give them mercy mercy and compassion when they don't deserve it mm -hmm. because he's given the same thing to you i agree with cheryl i i think it's i think it's really both because for most people it doesn't come natural it is work but within the prayer even you never actually get to the place where you're actually fully pure of heart, at least in my opinion. Could you, you don't, imagine? I, not, not here. <laughs> that would <laughs> I be like, amazing. I would, yeah, it would be awesome. But I just think that even as you're going through the process, you, you need to continue to ask God, okay, where now? Where's, where's this hidden thing that maybe I need to work on? Or I think you I'm, have to ask. I <laughs> ask what? Do you have to ask that question? Well, like uh, no, because yeah. I feel like it. I feel like there's always well, a long yeah, list. I mean, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 not not like I've okay, I've cleaned house. I'm good. No, I mean, kind of like okay, God, what do I need to work on right now? Like, why why am I feeling this stress or why am I feeling this anxiety or why do I feel this apprehension to get involved with this? What is it that I need to work on right now? Is it me or are you telling me something? Something like that, but. No, my yeah. Well, my I mean, the reason is, reason I say that is because for me, it feels like every time I'm able to work through something, then there's something else, <laughs> and, or something you thought you were done with, right? Yeah. And, and there are times up. I like want to fall out on the floor and say, "God, can I have a day off?" <laughs> like, yeah, you know, do we have to? We gotta. Do we have to work on this today? You know, can yeah. can you? Go work on Cheryl, you know, for a couple of days. <laughs> Don't or worry. Some, somebody else, you know, to, to have, do we have to? It, it, it is a, I don't want to, I, I don't want this to sound bad. Having a pure heart is exhausting. <laughs> it is refreshing. I don't, I, but it's exhausting at the same time because there is a, there's never a point where you get to stand back and go, we made it. You know, there is this, yeah. there's always a thread. There's always something, you know, um, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm currently working through something this morning. I was talking to Barbara about it while we were walking and I don't, at, at least I'm not sure she completely understands everything that goes on in my mind. Nobody probably does really, but <laughs> um I'm I'm working through something that you said it's I thought I was done with mm -hmm. it. I was done with it, but now it's something it's something different, but it's the same. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's you, you you know what I'm saying? It's it's different, but it's the same. Same route. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like and it's so difficult. Like for me, it really is difficult because there, it, it's got there's so many pieces to it. And I, I'm like, gosh, you know, Lord, can can you be satisfied for a couple of days, you know? <laughs> and and but I know he's purifying you. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I know if I don't, 
Because I've been here before, too. The, the, res, the minute I resist or withhold or don't do it, my heart starts hardening. Mm-hmm. It, it just going, it's going to happen. And um, I think that's the thing we miss the most in the process is that the minute we start resisting, our heart starts hardening. Oh, yeah. You know, um, there was a passage recently that we preached from. And boy, because the way we record podcasts and the way I preach, you know, we're not recording anywhere close to when I'm preaching a message. So my mind's a little bit screwed up right this minute. But one of the things God said he would do is he would go replace their heart that was full of gravel with a heart that was tender. Um, And I think the gravel picture is a much better picture than a heart of stone because we think of stone as this one big solid rock. And I think that's, if you got a heart of stone, that happened over a long period of time. Mm. But you can have a gravelly heart and not be that far removed from a super spiritual moment in your life because mm. you, um, you got to a point where you said, that's enough. You know, I don't know if anybody says it that way, but we resist. You know, we resist to the thing he's working on, and it could be a habit, it could be a, um, it could be a career choice. Do you think that comes more from like frustration of not wanting to work on it, or out of arrogance thinking that you don't need to work on it? I think it could be either. Okay. I think there are. I, I I don't want to talk about what I'm working through publicly just yet, but I'm I'm sometimes there are so many other facets to it, pieces that you can't your 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 question becomes how does this affect this and this and this and this mm-hmm. and this, you know. It's not something you can lay down in a day. It's not something. Well, you can, can. you can. Well, but it it is. It creates a lot of a lot of pieces. There's a lot a lot of pieces. And I, you know, should you say that like the 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 verse that like right now is just crushing me. Elijah comes along to Elisha, throws his mantle Mm -hmm. toward him. And Elisha, he says, follow me. And Elisha is got 12 team of oxen. You know, he's behind one set with a plow. And it says, he asked to go back and tell his mom and dad bye. But he killed the oxen, took the plow, turned it into a, mm-hmm. a, a, a fire and cooked the oxen. And then he immediately left and went and followed Elisha. He left it all. Like he just said, okay, we're going we're gonna to kill it and burn it and move on. And um, I can't get away from it. You know, I. You're I'm, wondering if you're supposed to be making a fire? Yeah, that's right. I'm like, you know. You know Sometimes it is let, very hard to know. Yeah, let's kill it and burn it and let's, let's get started yeah. instead of, you know, let's wean them and. You know, let's, you know, let's you know stretch it all out. It's just a it's a really complicated situation for me, uh, and and so I, I. But I also know the minute that I say no to God, my heart is me. It's, it's going to be a grain of sand or a piece mm-hmm. of gravel that's going to be there, and it's going to disrupt. You know, because I've been there. I mean, I know what it's like to not do what God wants me to do, and. And, and gravelly hearts become stone hearts, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and sandy hearts become gravelly hearts. And, and that that just that turning away, that resistance from doing what God. And sometimes it's a sometimes it can be relationships that we're in. It could be a habit that we have. It could be um, it could be simple things like TV shows that we watch. Mm-hmm. It's like this needs to be out of my life, I, you know, or I, I don't need to be listening to this music or I don't need to 
read this kind of material or I, you know th there's just so many pieces that god or i need to you know like one of them i'm much better at it today but the most uncomfortable thing that i had not no, that's not true one of the most uncomfortable things i had overcome was praying with people when they say will you pray for me mm -hmm. and they're usually not asking me to pray right then they're usually not asking for that but I've stood on the sidewalk at Food Lion. I've been in an aisle in Walgreens. I've got to the point now, if they say, you know, remember me in prayer, I'm like, let's pray right now. Mm -hmm. Two reasons. One, there's a it's important to them, and usually they're very appreciative of it. Two, I'll forget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and and so, you know, it, it's a, it, those small changes um, that, you know, when I, you have to do, or you're going to regress. There is no, you don't get to a place in Christ where you just go, okay, I'm set. You're either going up or down, forward or backward. There's no, okay, we're just sitting here for a while. Mm -hmm. Is that y'all's experience? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I, I was thinking through, you know, what you were talking about and his question of, you know, what is the reasons that we don't do that? And I think that the arrogance piece it, a lot of times is about us whether we really understand that we're doing this or not in the back of our minds we believe that we know what's better mm -hmm. you know we know what we can oh. handle we know how we think it's going to turn out we think that we know what the best thing in that situation is i give you two two examples and we got to wind this down this one's a little bit longer are they both about me uh, do what <laughs> i said are they both about me <laughs> no 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 no. neither of them have any I'm i don't think they have anything just to do with I brought that the up. situation i'm working through currently uh, you could you might be able to attribute it to arrogance mm -hmm. yeah you you might could you know they need me right like th this th i'm needed mm -hmm. and when I'm when I'm not actually, you know, maybe, maybe <laughs> I don't know. Um, you mean you perceive that they do, but perhaps God knows better, and they don't. That's right. Mm -hmm. the, the 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 other time, kind of like you're having kids. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> the The other time that I can specifically think through, and I remember, I remember, I had I had dealt with it before, I. Um, I had this revelation, but I remember being crushed when I when I heard this pastor speak this. So when when I became pastor um, here, I I I set my own salary. I asked for a specific it to be this because I wanted to hire some staff. And that the hiring staff was more important than me making what the church had been paying the previous pastor. Mm -hmm. And so for the first, so I've been pastor 13 years now, the first six years I was pastor, I, no, it was longer than that, six or seven years, I was not even the highest paid person on staff. Mm -hmm. And sometime, you know, later, the elders just felt like, hey, you, you got you can't keep doing this. And it was probably not healthy for the church either, because if I had died, they weren't going to replace me for that. You know, and then it would have just been this unrealistic expectation. And so I just said, OK, whatever, you know, you do whatever. And um, we went we had been through a lot of years that we were struggling financially and i can take you back to the year where i said okay you do whatever you want to and and, and i'll just give whatever i feel like i need to give and i took my foot off of it and my because i felt like you know i was doing the right thing i genuinely did feel like i was doing the right thing um the finances of the church have been significantly better every year there's been an increase since that time about two years ago, I would say it's been about two years ago now, I was listening to Robert Morris. And um, I was walking. I, I mean, I know right. I was just past Tyler and Alyssa's house on my walk. I know exactly where I was when I was when I was hearing this. And he's telling this story about one of their campuses and the campus was doing well. And um, he had asked, you know, the, the leaders there how they were 
paying him, the the campus pastor, and and they had said, well, we've been trying to give him a raise, but he won't take it because he wants to hire other staff. Mm -hmm. And um, so he he says during that campus pastor's review, he was asking him about it, and he told him, he said, you know, I'm taking less because we need more staff. The church is growing, and I don't want to do well. And uh, Robert Morris asked him a question, that, and it was it, it, this is the it got me. He said, "So, let me ask you a question." He's asking this campus pastor the question. He said, "Are you the provider, or is God the provider?" <laughs> That's a hard question for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I I wept on the street because <clears throat> I realized that it probably was either me or him. It couldn't be both. And once I got out of the way, I thought I was doing the right thing. You understand that? Like well, I yeah, genuinely they, believed yeah. I was doing the right thing. In hindsight, I don't know that I would have made a different choice. But I was also making myself the provider somewhat arrogantly. You know, it becomes a matter of pride. Instead of letting him him do it, and I, I, I can I see that happening through business, you know, other like I I I, I can see how it becomes a okay. I got to get out of the way and trust him, mm -hmm. and that's hard to do because our natural inclination is to be the one that does it and not allow him to do it. And sometimes it really that is the choice: is he providing or are we providing? And if we're the ones that that are doing it, we're getting in the way sometimes. Y'all have anything to add? No, to I mean, I mean, sometimes you're trying to do the right thing because we're supposed to be good managers of the resources that God gives us, the tasks that He calls us to do. And I mean, sometimes you think you're doing the right thing, but you could be getting in. I mean, many of us do that. Yeah, I mean, I've done a disservice to my kids at times mm -hmm. by being. A provider, because I think that's what the scripture wants me to do. But it can be detrimental at times. Mm -hmm. Thank y'all for joining us for an extra long podcast today. <laughs> um, we hope you'll be back tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. Monday, as we begin a brand new book of the Bible, we'll look forward to talking to you then. <laughs>